This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the MSI Creator 17. MSI, a company mostly known for the gaming laptops, so they have been doing mobile workstations, a fancy name for laptops that do creative stuff, for a while now. So if this looks a little familiar as we do the 360 tour around it, well, that's because it really is reminiscent of their GE75 Raider, a 17-inch, relatively slim and light gaming laptop. But other than the silver paint job to make it look more businessy with no blingy red accents and no RGB keyboard, just a white backlit keyboard, we have something really interesting here, which is a 4K mini LED display, one of the first in a laptop. We're going to look at it now. So yeah, we've seen this from gaming laptop companies before. Razer, MSI, Asus, they come up with a mobile workstation or a laptop for creators that's pretty heavily based on a gaming laptop, and that's not necessarily a bad approach. So if you want it without the bling, without the traditional kind of black and red look, all that sort of thing, often we see them switch over to NVIDIA Quadro graphics instead of the usual GeForce RTX graphics that we see in a gaming laptop. And uh, for your everyday home creator kind of person making videos, and even for folks like us, you know, making our videos for YouTube, I, NVIDIA GeForce graphics are absolutely fun. We don't need Quadro. Quadro is more for the more corporate kind of folks. I'm, for example, at Disney, I'm sure they use a lot of Quadro workstations. So it's perfectly fine, too, for most people. That said, there's not a whole lot different from the Raider, so you can also consider that. But the most important and different thing, and the reason I said yes to MSI, when they asked us to review this, is that mini LED display, which everybody's getting excited about talking about. iPads switching over at Max and uh, you name it, right? TVs, whatever it's going to be. And it's supposed to be a very attractive technology in terms of getting very bright and also having very wide color gamut. So MSI has a couple of different options here. We do have the mini LED, which is a 4K matte display. All their options are matte and non-touch, by the way. So this one claims full P3 color gamut, which is typically used for cinema, but to my eye, the default P3 they have, they have two P3 profiles that they offer in terms of software calibration. It's really closer to more like an Adobe RGB profile, but anyway, that's what they claim. But they also say a thousand nit of brightness, and this has 240 zones of local dimming, which is something if you've shopped for TVs you're familiar with, where it can dim different zones to try to affect more of a contrast, and so the dark areas look darker, that sort of thing. So that's a pretty neat technology. If you want to start with the base model of this, it's just a full HD 300 nit, 144 hertz display, which is obviously geared more towards gaming types who just want a gaming laptop that doesn't look all blingy gamery. And for those of you who are more into just the photo editing and maybe not the video editing and the HDR kind of work, there's a 4K IPS full Adobe RGB display option. So you've got a couple there. So let's talk about the display first, because it, it might be why you're here as well. Uh, I think part of what hurts here is MSI's color calibration software. They have um, five different presets, Adobe RGB, P3, uh, modified P3 that it ships with, sRGB, you name it. It's not really very good. None of the profiles, when we test it with our colorimeter, really come up as being anything close to color accurate. So that hurts a little bit. I mean, I personally, if it was my machine, they've got a custom option and you can play with that and you can actually improve it too. Warm it up a little bit, which it needs, uh, correct the gamma, which is a little bit too high by default. But I would probably just try to set it to its complete default and use my own colorimeter to calibrate if I'm doing professional work with this thing, which probably might be one of the reasons why you're buying it. And if you're just buying it for prettier looking content, well, then that's fine. You can use the preset profiles and if they look good to your eye, you can be happy with that. It, they say a thousand nits. We measured almost 900 nits. So yes, it is freaking bright. It really is. But the flip side here is unlike OLED displays, which have perfect blacks or even a really high quality IPS display, they can have very low blacks. The black level on this is really high. And you can see the metrics on screen. Again, measured with their default factory calibration profile. So it's not going to be as shock and awe as OLED in terms of the contrasts and dark scenes are not going to look mm, as dark as they might. You get the idea. If you're editing HDR video, it might throw you off a little bit, so you might want to do your own calibration. You could use Windows HDR, but you know what? Windows HDR is still kind of a work in progress and often makes all the colors look kind of wonky and it's a lot of work to get them back to the way they should be. 
but that would be an option as well. So it's a nice display. Colors do pop. Contrast looks pretty good, mostly thanks to how bright it gets. And if you're not running it at max brightness, because who would it? Almost 900 nits, right? And then the contrast calms down a little bit, looks a little bit better. And it's a very pleasing display, but I'm not 100% sold on it on this machine yet. So beyond the display, how about it, right? Uh, performance here is, uh, you get a pretty high spec Core i7. It's the eight core Intel 10th gen i7 CPU and your choice of NVIDIA RTX 2060, RTX 2070 Max-Q, RTX 2070 Super Max-Q, or our model, which is the top of the line, and it has RTX 2080 Super Max-Q graphics inside. So the price runs anywhere from $17.99 to $35.99 for our high-end model. So if you go with that full HD display, just RTX 2060, 16 gigs of RAM, then you're looking at you know, the much more affordable price tag. And then you've got the IPS 4K sitting somewhere in the upper half of the, the price range, but not as expensive as ours. Uh, those are good metrics right there. And for our top-of-the-line models, we have 32 gigs of DDR4 2666 megahertz RAM. There are two RAM slots here, so 64 would be the max. You get a fast M.2 NVMe SSD. There are actually two slots here. So that, that's good performance specs right there. And performance is going to depend on what you're doing with it as ever. Uh, this is not tuned like the Raider, like a gaming laptop. Let's put it that way. In terms of the cooling, in terms of the CPU temperatures it hits, and the throttling, and all of that sort of thing, if you're going to be trying to do Cyberpunk 2077 with this, sure, yes, you'll be able to play it, but probably not as well as a purpose-built gaming laptop because the thermals are getting in the way here. It gets a little toasty, folks. But if you're using it for pro apps, creator kind of purposes, if you're doing 4K video editing in Premiere, I ran into no problems here. I didn't see it thermal throttling even when exporting 4K video. I mean, if you're doing crazy number of audio channels and all that sort of thing, getting seriously pro about it, like for TV or movie studios, then you probably could get this thing throttling. But if you're doing Blender renders, that sort of thing, yeah, it can handle that just fine. But if you're buying this because you want a game to, I still might lean towards the Raider, for example, instead, and getting a little bit better thermal headroom going on that. In terms of portability, though, it's pretty impressive. 5.29 pounds, which is 2.4 kilograms and under an inch thick for a 17-inch powerful laptop. That's pretty impressive, so it's an easy carry. The power brick is a 230-watt power brick, and it's pretty slim. It's not so huge for this class of machines, so that certainly stands in its favor compared to some of the really big honking gaming laptops that are on the market. Connectivity is pretty good too. We have a Thunderbolt 3 port on this and we also have a USB-C port which does support charging in. Those going to be really slow because USB-C max is at 100 watts and obviously the ships with a 230 watt charger that's better than nothing. You've got USB-A ports on board. You've got both headphone and mic jack on board and they support high res audio. MSI does a good job with those usually, and that's a nice thing to have, especially for content creators. Micro SD card slot is UHS Class 3, so it's fast. Yeah, it's not a full-size card, but these days, I can live with it. That's fine. We got Ethernet. We have HDMI 2.0, so yes, you can connect a 4K display at 60 hertz on this. So, not too bad. The ports are concentrated kind of on the middle of both sides, which might be a little bit annoying if you're using an external mouse. It might get in the way of your hands a little bit. The power jack also plugs in there, but at least it's a right angle. The speakers on this are 2x2 two two watts, and they're okay. They're not amazing, but they're not hideous either. They're kind of run-of-the-mill, medium quality. The keyboard on this, I find it pretty pleasant. It's not so different from the feel of the latest, well, GE75 Raider. The keys feel fairly crisp, maybe not as springy and as lively as the Raider, but feels fine. Again, it's white backlighting, multi-stage. There are no RGB color light shows going on. And we have a very large glass trackpad, and it feels silky. It feels kind of nice. It behaves very well. The battery is 82 watt hour, which is decent. It's not that different from the Razer Blade 15, for example, in terms of battery capacity. Obviously, battery life is really going to depend on what you're doing with this and which display you go for. If you're going for either of the 4K displays, but particularly that mini LED display where you might be tempted to drive that brightness up, well, that would certainly tank the, the battery run times on this. If you go with the Full HD and an RTX 2060, things will look better. For our tests, we do mixed productivity and some streaming videos. So that means your Word, your Excel, your Slack, your Netflix streaming, that sort of thing, at 150 nits of brightness, which given the range of this machine is not very bright, but it's good enough for indoor 
low light use. And I was getting about four and a half hours for run times on that. So yeah, it does have Nvidia Optimus on board, by the way. So you do have switchable graphics and that means that it was running on integrated graphics for those tests. One touch that I actually like is you can use MSI's creator software, which is basically a repurposing of their Dragon Center software for well, more creator types. And you can switch to dedicated graphics only. Why does that matter? Well, when you're playing games and sometimes even doing other things, you'll notice that you get a bit better performance when it's set to dedicated only mode for whatever reason that might be for them. There is no G-Sync on board for the built-in panels here. To take off the bottom cover, by the way, aluminum all around on the cover of this laptop, top and bottom, 15 Phillips head screws, no less than that. And one of them is hidden under the factory seal sticker. So remember to get that one. And then it comes off pretty easily. Start from the front edge and pry it off. There's no obnoxious plastic clips making it inordinately difficult. Obviously we got plenty of ventilation going on over here. And these are the grates on each side for the stereo speakers that are down firing. And the underside looks like so. And here's our interior and haha, we can see we have a lot of this kind of mylar heat shield stuff going on, but you do have access to the battery without messing with that. Uh, by the way, I did not tear that up. Somebody else did tear that up. This is our M.2 boot SSD. It comes with a two terabyte for this high end $3,599 SKU. Second M.2 slot here, compatible with NVMe and SATA drives. And obviously the fans are left open for cooling and we've got the three fans, which is their Cooler Boost Trinity Plus design. And the good news and the bad news. So after we pulled off that plastic covering here, a little bit bigger view of the motherboard or better view, there's our Intel Wi-Fi 6 card AX201. So that is accessible, but as you can see, just like MSI's stealth laptops from a go, uh, this has an inverted motherboard. So if you want to get to the heat sinks to repaste the heat sinks and CPU and GPU on this, you're going to have to remove the motherboard to gain access to them. We do have the three fans here and we've got intakes and exhausts rear and sides, which is a good thing. Something that they do with their gaming laptops, their cooler boost Trinity or Trinity plus solution, which has three fans total. So you got two here, you got one here. So both your CPU and your GPU stay cold and they have seven heat pipes if we could only see them without pulling out the motherboard, which is a pretty good darn amount of cooling. As you might guess, given the fact that some of the component heat, the heat sinks are facing upward, the keyboard gets warm, but not that bad really. But the bottom in this area, which is where the most heat generation would happen, does get pretty toasty when you're pushing it hard. So, you know, you probably don't want to put it on your lap if you're doing a heavy duty 3D render, but for normal use, temperatures are fine. So that's the MSI Creator 17. So you've got a couple of options here. Anything from the full HD and 144 hertz for gamers all the way up to the 4K displays at 60 hertz and less for gamers, but for that wide gamut for creator types. So you've got powerful, fairly powerful graphics on board here. Granted, some of them are the Max-Q versions, but still, I mean, nobody's going to sneeze in an RTX 2080 Super Max-Q, are they? And a good upgradability. The, the one thing that I'd like to have seen done better is that mini LED display, particularly the contrast level and the color calibration from the factory on it. It's not OLED yet, but it'd be good to see what the future has in store. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.